Have you ever thought about how some people go from tier three colleges to getting jobs at big companies like Google? It may seem impossible, but today I'm going to share with you how you can become a software engineer at Google, especially if you are just starting out. And here's a motivating factor. The intern salary for Google right now is 1.25 lakhs per month for a duration of three months. And for someone looking for a full-time position, the salary range for the L3 position ranges between 55 lakhs for zero years of experience to 70 lakhs for someone who is switching after 1.5 or two years of experience. Imagine stepping into your dream role with such incredible compensation. To help you get ready for this, we are conducting free masterclasses on our interview call platform to guide you through the entire interview process and get that dream job offer. You can find the details of all these free masterclasses on our interview calls event page. So make sure to check the description below and register for these free masterclasses. Let me start by sharing a bit about my own journey. I began my career in a tier 3 college just like many of you. My first major job was at Geo, and I never imagined that I would be working in future for companies like American Express, Adobe and Goldman Sachs in their Poland office. I was lucky enough to get an international offer of 1.5 crores from D. Shaw Luxembourg. And I also got offers from Amazon in London and Uber in India with Uber offering 61 lakhs package. What's more fulfilling is that in the last year alone, I have helped more than 680 learners get their dream job. My journey is proof that it's possible to rise from humble beginnings and I hope my story inspires you too. Now let's dive into how you can start your journey towards becoming a software engineer at Google. The first step is to understand the hiring process. When you want to apply for a job at Google, you usually start by applying online. Google has a careers page where you will find the job listings and you will need to upload your resume there. After you apply, the recruiters will look at your resume. If they think that you have the right skills and experience for that role, they will shortlist you for the interview. The interview process usually starts with a phone or video call. This is basically a chance for them to get to know you better and see if you are a fit for that particular job role. If you do well in the first interviews, you will be invited for the other technical roles. So this first role is basically the phone screen round. These interviews can be quite challenging as they often involve coding problems and technical questions. So it's important to prepare well in advance. Now let's talk about preparation, especially for the coding interviews. One of the most important sections to focus on is data structures and algorithms, often called DSA. Many candidates find the coding interviews to be tough, but I'm here to make it easier for you. Often people say that the coding questions asked in these interview rounds are quite similar to the competitive programming questions asked on Code Forces and Code Chef. So here's a short, complete and realistic DSA guide for Google interviews as well as competitive programming. Study for competitive programming is quite vast, so we will focus more on the Google interviews, also some overlapping study materials for competitive programming. The study materials mostly depends on the position you are applying for. For example, I've seen people being asked advanced topics like rope data structure, Hofcroft CARP algorithm, Maxflow algorithm, Hungarian algorithm, but these are typically for L4 or L5 position where DSA matters less and more focus is given towards system design. I was myself asked rope data structure in one of my Google interview rounds. However, this guide will focus more on entry level positions, that is L3 position or the intern positions at Google. I won't be giving a massive list of video links for each topic. Instead, this guide will be short and concise with tips so that you can complete it within a reasonable amount of time. I will also try to categorize the topics so that you can easily identify your weaknesses and improve them over the time. Remember, only practice will give you a sense of completeness for each of these topics. Don't rush, enjoy the journey and aim to be a natural problem solver rather than someone who aces interviews. You are not alone. Keep moving, never give up. Hard work will pay off soon. To begin, gain mastery in time complexity. Then go through all data structures and implement each of them in a particular programming language. It can be C++, it can be Java, it can be Python, it can be JavaScript or any other programming language of your choice. Try to code the structure yourself after learning it 
and practice on lead code. That's all you need to ace the data structure interview questions. The major algorithmic topics are implementation problems, programming paradigms like divide and conquer, greedy, backtracking, dynamic programming, brute force, etc. Graph theory including directed and undirected graphs, weighted graphs, rooted and unrooted trees, and DAGs. There are mathematical topics like linear algebra, computational geometry, number theory, combinatorics, and a lot more. There are other topics like string processing and also bit manipulation. For implementation problems, the key to success is just practice. Besides lead code, try other platforms as well to enhance your skills. When it comes to programming paradigms, recursion is the backbone of this category. So before before you dive into dynamic programming or backtracking or divide and conquer, you should master recursion. Understanding recursions goes beyond knowing the basics. You need to understand how recursion saves states, how it uses the stack, how it solves and backtracks from the smaller subproblems. Spend adequate time practicing this as it will help you approach and solve the paradigm based questions more efficiently. For divide and conquer, solve algorithms like merge sort, segment trees, and binary search. For greedy algorithm, which can be more challenging, solve questions like knapsack, job scheduling, or Huffman coding. Understanding backtracking and branch and bound approaches will also help you significantly in solving DP problems. Problems. Dynamic programming is regarded as one of the hardest topics in interview preparation. The more you practice, the better you get at identifying patterns and approaching these DP problems. For instance, certain DP problems such as those involving a string uses a 2D matrix where ij generally refers to the solution for the indices i to j. Recognizing these patterns is the key to mastering DP problems. One tip for the Python users, whenever you are coming up with a backtracking approach, you can convert it into a DP solution using functools.lru cache decorator. As a final note, studying known problems is quite crucial. From topics like minimum path, distinct ways, and merging intervals, you will see patterns in different problems allowing you to to approach DP systematically. The more you expose yourself to these patterns, the more you improve. Remember, the journey of mastering DSA requires patience, practice, and persistence. Keep practicing and you will see progress. Many candidates have misconceptions about the hiring process. One common misbelief is that only graduates from top colleges matter. However, Google values talents from all backgrounds. They want to see your skills and how you think. Another misconception is that one single interview defines you. The truth is that every interview is a chance to learn and improve. You should see each experience as a stepping stone. Also remember that soft skills such as communication and teamwork is as important as technical skills. In many interviews, the interviewers see if you can work well with others. I have seen candidates succeed by being genuine during their interviews. When you are preparing for an interview, think what makes you unique and different from others. What projects and experiences you can share that will help you stand out from the crowd. The interview landscape is changing specifically with the remote work being more common. Many interviews are conducted online which allows candidates to participate from anywhere in the world. This is exciting because this means you can enjoy the comfort of your home and also give the interviews. However, you must prepare for the virtual setting. Make sure your internet connection is strong and also find a peaceful place to give your interview. Practice speaking clearly and confidently in front of the camera. You want to make sure you come across as a professional. If you receive feedback from the interviewers that is inconsistent or unclear, don't hesitate to ask for clarifications. It's perfectly acceptable to reach out and seek feedback on how you can improve yourself. Also, keeping in touch with the recruiters during the waiting period is crucial. A simple follow-up mail can show your enthusiasm and interest for that particular position, and it can set you apart from other candidates. Diversity hiring plays a significant role in ensuring fairness in the interview process. Companies need to actively reach out to a wider range of candidates to provide equal opportunities for all. Managing nerves during the interviews is something which many people struggle with. If you feel anxious, 
know that you are not alone practicing mock interviews can help you feel more comfortable in sharing about your experiences and also solving the coding questions and even you can practice with your friends and families i found that consistently practicing on different coding platforms significantly increased and improved my interview results regularly challenging yourself with complex problems will help you grow as a programmer also as an engineer throughout my journey i have faced several interview scenarios from getting job offers to rejections and even ghosting by the recruiters ghosting is when you don't hear back from the employer after the interview is over i know it can be very frustrating i have faced it myself but i know it's very important to be positive and keep moving forward rejections are not the end of your journey they are there to improve you in your path keep improving your skills and don't let setbacks discourage you i am excited to announce that we will be hosting guests on our podcast who have worked in google india and then later transition to a role in europe middle east north america and latin america they will discuss their journey and offer insights of working at google india and abroad so make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the episodes also i will be sharing a list of important Google interview questions that were asked to candidates in the last 6 months you should be definitely going through these interview questions which i am sharing in the google docs link is in the description if you found this video helpful do like it and share it with people who may benefit from it let's spread the knowledge and inspire each other on this journey what challenges are you facing in your path to becoming a software engineer share it in the comments below and i would love to hear your stories